Welcome back to the podcast, you beautiful soul. I have a very special guest today. Hi. I have my princess <laughs> in here, my baby girl. I call her G-Money because she is the G-Money. Um, she's also a little bitch. I call her a little bitch all the time. But, um, guys, we're doing a relationship podcast. We do one every now and then. It's been a year and a half since the last one on my one. About a year since we did one on George's podcast. George has a podcast, by the way. Go hit that up. And yeah, we're just going to go through a couple updates, share what's going on in our personal life, our relationship life, share some vulnerable lessons that we've learned being together for how long now? Uh, almost four years. Four years since I slid into those DMs <laughs> and got it done. So, um, but yeah, I guess we're going to kick off with just life updates. So I'd like for you to go first, baby girl. So life updates for you in the last sort of 12 months. What's what's happening? Um, well, biggest thing well for us is we got engaged. Oh, there's a rock on that You're finger. You're watching the video. You're watching the video. There's a rock on that finger. So... She's mine. Um, we tell, got engaged in tell, December. Tell us, tell us about that. I, I was very proud of how I pulled this off. <laughs> you so. pulled it off really well. Um, I had no idea, which is uh, quite a feat considering that I'm not easy to surprise. If I anyone, was, oh, sorry, sorry to butt in. Like, for some um, <laughs> couples, you may relate to this where uh, the partner is like an FBI agent. Like, every me. little <laughs> secret, she gets, she gets a whiff of it and she won't stop. She, she figures it out. So, it was actually quite challenging to pull it off. So... Yeah, yeah I happy. was I was the kid that used to un unwrap my Christmas gifts under the tree and then rewrap them, Cheeky, um, yeah. and I got away with that. So yeah, I am very hard to surprise, <laughs> but you did it. Um, yes, yeah, so it was in December last year, and we had already organised to have just a couples photo shoot. We just haven't had any nice photos together in a while, so we yep. were doing a couples photo shoot on the beach. I just thought it was more for our branding and just to have some sort of nice photos together. And I think that was very smart. It, it took it as a great opportunity because my nails were done, my hair was done, my oh, makeup was done, I looked sh- good. Can you share? Because <laughs> her mum was in on this. So Lisa, if you're listening to this, um, she got her nails done. Oh, and, and the she, lady did a really oh, bad job. And she got like, she wanted like a starfish or something. No, I, like the, I didn't like the color that she chose, but she booked me in for the wrong appointment. So she ran out of time. So then she said, oh, I could do a bit of nail art on one of the nails. I can do um, a flower. And I was like, okay, yeah, cute. That might be cute. Oh my God. It looked so bad. It literally looked like a bloated starfish. It It looked like Patrick's a star (laughs) and it was on the wedding finger. Yeah, it It was was literally (laughs) on the wedding finger. Oh my God. So uh, when uh, George's mum came in and came down, excuse me, for the afternoon and she... Like, and George is like, oh, maybe it won't be too bad. Who worry? Who cares? Let's not worry about it. Me and like Lisa looked at each other like, nah, 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 we'll fix it up. We'll, we'll fix it up. Because it was literally on the finger that the ring was going to go on. I was like, oh my God. But but she fixed it. Yeah. Um, so mum was in on it too. So Lewis and mum had been communicating and organizing because it's my mum's ring. Yeah. Thank um, you, Lisa, by the way. Very great. Yeah. So really special. It's my mum's ring that uh, he used. Yeah. But yeah, so I was down there just, I thought it was a couple's photo shoot and we're sort of like an hour into the shoot. And then all of a sudden I turn around and he's on one knee. <laughs> it was, uh, it was good. And, and was I thought he was taking the piss at first. I, I was like, what? Like, are you serious? And I, I thought we, it went, it went well. I was very nervous. Um, I yeah, you had, had the ring box in your, yeah, in your underwear. <laughs> I had it in my, cr- well, we were on the beach and I had like no, nothing to keep it. Cause I didn't know when I was going to. So I just kept it there. If I had it in my pockets, it'd be big bulge there hanging out. So um, but yeah, we made it happen and <clears throat> we also had a bit of a surprise afterwards. Um, I organized George's close friends to come around. Um, and yeah, so we had close friends to celebrate afterwards, but yeah, got engaged. So that was, yeah. uh, that was cool. Super fun. What else has happened in the last 12 months for you? Um, I've definitely had a lot of progress in my hobbies. So in my training, I train a lot. I do weightlifting, CrossFit, had a lot of progress in that, which is really cool. A lot of gains. Yeah. Um, and um, what was I going to say? Yeah, my business, like my TikTok is going really, really well. But I'm actually stepping back a little bit in my um, career business endeavors with uh, OnlyFans and modeling and things like that, which is super exciting. I'm helping Lewis out a bit more on his and we're sort of getting ready to settle down soon. So that's been a super exciting change for me in the last 12 months. Cool. Um, we got a kitten. <laughs> is the cat here? Uh, no, he's he's left the room um so we now have the dog and the cat lewis took a lot of convincing but now the cat loves him more than me which i find standard. really ironic absolutely standard um yeah i just feel like i've been really progressing in terms of my personal development 
I've been reading a lot more. I got back into reading as a hobby, Crushing which has reading. been really important to me. So I'm currently have read 50 books this year already. Mm. Halfway through the year, I've read 50. Machine. But yeah, that's kind of my life. I just, we kind of hang out. We do our couple stuff together. I train, I read, I hang out with the dogs. It's great. I'm just really, really loving like slowing down my life and not needing to prove myself as much and just settle into what actually makes me happy. Love that. And you said self-development. What's been some of your personal lessons whether it's through a course or a book or just sort of self life lessons what's been some changes that you've experienced over the last 12 months i think for me i just haven't been as reactive as i used to be so absolutely agree. i used to get i'm not sure if i would use the word triggered definitely triggered in the beginning of our relationship but i'm not as reactive to things when i see them anymore like don't get me wrong i'm a massive feminist completely but I used to just get so triggered by everything that I would see online and I would get so angry and I would have so much, you could say it would be passion, but it was a lot of anger and resentment and I would use that to fuel me. Whereas now I feel like I'm coming from a much more balanced approach and it just, I don't like feeding into mm. that anger anymore that I find in a lot of the social justice causes, yeah. even though I'm still really passionate about them and working, I think through working on myself, I'm not so involved in it anymore where I feel the anger myself. Like I feel like I've healed a lot of stuff. Perfect. I feel like I've done a lot of work with us, obviously in our relationship. When uh, little things pop up in our relationship, little fights, I think I'm getting a lot better at that. In the beginning of our relationship, I used to be really aggressive when we would fight and I would you know, say things I didn't mean or I would try and get a reaction out of you. And I actually realized that I had this really deep fear of abandonment. Mm. And every time we would fight... I would instigate the fight or keep going and keep looking for a fight because in my mind, I think subconsciously I thought it's better that we're fighting because if we stop fighting, he's going to leave or he'll walk away. And for me, the fear of being abandoned was so much worse than, you know, the argument itself. So I was always kind of instigating and pushing these fights further than they needed to go and just kind of egging you on. Um, so that was kind of a big realization I had in the last year in terms of just like my development with us as a couple um so did a little bit of work on that on those abandonment issues which i already kind of knew that i had some trauma there but just seeing the way it would shape into our relationship was really interesting mm. and then i've done a few little courses here and there um i do a lot of um embo like feminine embodiment and sexual healing sort of courses um just working on myself a lot um keep going <laughs> Not at all, just talking to that part there. There you go. Um, but yeah, so I've done a few of uh, Kim and Ami's courses, which has been great, which is definitely like sort of embodying your feminine energy and stepping into that rather than like sitting in your masculine energy so much and a lot of sexual healing, which has yeah. been really fun. But yeah, that's what's sort of in my personal development in the past year or so. I wrote down um, how we handle when we're triggered in, in fights, I guess. So mm. you kind of knew we're going into that. Maybe let's go into that now because you kind of went into that just then. How have, from your experience, I'd like to know how we handle them now. Like we had one a couple of weeks ago and referring to the egg, it's a scrambled egg. So yeah. let's, um, if you're okay, just sharing from your, your side of things. The cat has entered the room, by the way, so <laughs> we might grab him for the camera soon. But um, well, maybe, yeah. maybe you share it from your perspective first. Yeah, cool. So um, I guess like it, it ties, uh, the, the part I love the most about relationships and being in, in such a conscious and embodied one with you is that we do we do the work on each other and with each other um i'm trying to get the mic but look at you at the same time so <laughs> um fine. yeah so yeah i guess doing being conscious of it like i do i do content on literally triggers when you're triggered you're in your wounds you're in the things you haven't healed through your partner is going to reveal more parts of those reveal more of those wounds for you to work through and then obviously experiencing that with you is um, is something I'm, I'm really proud of that we, we work through it so well and we continuously get better at doing them. So um, I guess something that I'm really proud of what we've done, you mentioned before how you said you are saying you are trying to keep the fight going to keep the attention there yeah. or however you worded that before. I think that doesn't really happen anymore. I remember there was one that happened probably or maybe even it was, no, six it was months at, yeah, ago. It was at this house. It was it actually was, right after we got engaged. That's right. There's the balance for you. Yeah. Right? There's the balance, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So, um, yeah, like there was an incident where <laughs> the cat's like, the cat scratches the mirror. It looks really funny, but uh, he's scratching the mirror right now. So, yeah, like there was a, um, a, I guess a trigger or an argument that we had and it was like you were constantly trying to like egg it, 
egg me on to keep it going. And I was proud in the way that I did handle that. But I don't see you do that anymore, which is really, really awesome. But it doesn't mean that you still don't get triggered. You still don't go into your wounds. And I think it's just how conscious you are on it and how you're able to navigate through it, which is something that I really enjoy doing life with you. And you've helped me work through my shit so much. So yeah, we had one, I think maybe a month ago now. Um, and Georgia was making me dinner. She asked if she could make me dinner. And I said, absolutely, please do For so. For reference, I don't normally cook. Lewis normally <laughs> cooks. <laughs> I, I, I'm normally the chef of the, of the house. And I'm not the best cook either. For context, I'm Neither not. Neither of us are very good. <laughs> I can make a good steak and bacon and eggs. <laughs> That's a bit, probably as good <laughs> as I get. But um, And anyway, so Georgia was making food. So I went up to the kitchen to help out because I... I that's I just went up to ask for assistance and she was making me an egg a fried egg and the pan was like for a burger for a burger and the the pan was very dry (laughs) it was like bone dry and the egg looked like a scrambled egg and i just said babe hey like what's going on here and i'm sure unconsciously it was a bit sarcastic because that's my inner child i'd like to talk about inner childs today as well um I'm sure my inner child made it come across a bit sarcastic because that's just the default that I go to when I'm triggered. And it just really, like, instantly I saw Georgia get triggered. I instantly <laughs> saw her get into it. And then, like, everything from I there. I was so defensive. Yeah. And this, the beautiful the line that I, I use so frequently is you see the word, you don't see things the way they are, you see things the way you are. And when she was in that state, like, everything I did just made it worse. And I was like, oh, like, no worries, I'll do the avocado. He's like, no, I'm doing your avocado. And it's like, it was all like that. But... We handle it, handle it pretty well. Like I'm still getting better at that because I I'm a I'm a walk away person, which makes things worse from George's. Um, when Georgia likes to be held and be present with it, um, so that's something I'm still working on definitely. But then afterwards, once the dust had settled, I think we worked through it really well. Just asking the questions like how I asked Georgia the question, how do you work through your things? Because I went through. I went to a podcast in Sydney on last week on Friday, and the, the coast of Shine Shine drinks. For anyone that drinks those, they're fucking awesome. And he asked me a question: How long do you give your partner from like the time they were triggered time to work on it? Um, to say versus like, hey, you're not doing the work. I'm leaving type of thing. Like, what? How much room do you give them to go work on the trigger? And I thought it was a great question. And I said, well, I don't really have an answer. We just know like, hey, you've got 48 hours or anything like that. I think it's just been able to put awareness on it and be like, okay, great. I just got really triggered right now. This is coming from something in your past, whether it's ex-boyfriends, whether it's childhood, mum, dad, parents, teachers, whatever it may be. It's just learning how to process and everyone has their own ways. And I asked Georgia, I said, Georgia, what baby, what is your way of processing? Like we've just become conscious of something today, whether it's from, and I'll let obviously hear your, your side of this, but we became conscious of something today of something that, you haven't worked through there's something there that i brought up unconsciously i brought it up and it was brought to the surface how are you going to heal through this how are you going to go do the work for this because if you don't then the same thing's going to get triggered next time and then and that for me that's like the biggest red flag in a relationship for our relationship anyways um something that i've always been upfront about is that we always work on ourselves and i'm not saying i remember the, the line you don't have to become tony robbins you don't have to be the world's best self-developed person but we're always working on our things because if you don't the same problems the same triggers the same things keep coming up and it just causes more frustration more anger more whatever so over time your relationship should get less volatile because you're constantly healing together so yeah that was that was my perspective i set off a a trigger in you um i thought we handled it relatively well like it didn't like kick off into too much i definitely got triggered and she then triggered me and i felt like really unvalidated i felt hurt i felt frustrated um but it didn't get too um like i was explosive from yeah. there um we had our food together um we chatted and then we went to bed later and we, we ended on a good note and we we're, were really good about it uh and then you continue and then i asked the question how are you going to go now go do the work through what we just revealed tonight so that was my version of it what's yours version of what happened yeah your version of what happened and maybe i'd like for you to answer that last question how like how do you work through your stuff maybe to give guy the guys listening some context because again the work you do in an intimate relationship is the most deep spiritual work you're ever going to do no plant medicine ceremony no counselor no coach no business no kids maybe but your intimate relationship if you're in a safe one where you can be your inner child or be vulnerable be real they're going to reveal those parts of you that you haven't worked through yet. And that we're just kind of given an example of one that happened with us a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago now. 
So yeah, I would like to know your versions of events and then also how do you go work through it? Because I've got my ways, but I want to hear from you so then people can listen to it and get some value from it as well. Well, I guess the way you described what happened was pretty much what happened. I think I, my, like one of my highest love language is um, like gift giving slash acts of service. So I like to provide, I like, you know, I'll always buy you like treats and things like that when I come home from the store or I like doing things for you. Um, so I don't normally cook. So like I wanted to make burgers. It was something I haven't made before. Like I wanted to kind of just like make a nice little dinner for us to sit down and I was doing it and I was like, Oh, I should, add, I should add an egg. Cause he always wants more protein. And I didn't cook the egg white. The egg, little, the yolk broke straight away and I was really frustrated, but I just kind of left it and I was like, eh, it's going on the burger. Like it all goes down the same way. That was my logic. I'm like, who gives a fuck if it's half scrambled? Yeah. Cause it goes down the same way. Which I agree to. And then I think it was more so like I, in the moment I didn't really feel feel much appreciation for the fact that I was going out of my way to like make you some nice food and I felt like it was just criticism and there was a couple of little things there as well that I don't really remember but I just remember having felt criticism from you already and I think criticism for me is an inner wound from my childhood that I need to work on more and that I have been working on and it's definitely been brought out in this relationship sometimes I take it as a personal attack and I think that comes from somewhere in my childhood, especially with my stepdad, I believe, um, just being criticized for almost everything that I did. So my worth was kind of tied into performing well or, you know, doing things well. So for me, getting criticized meant that I wasn't worth much, if that sort of makes sense. So I didn't even realize it was a trigger until the it happened and I got so defensive over it. And I, and I just felt, in the moment I felt hurt, I, I felt like, you know, I'm trying to do something nice for you and you're just focusing on the negative. Yeah. And it made me feel like I wasn't worth much and you didn't appreciate it. And then looking back on it based on how you asked the question of how do I deal with these triggers, I realized that I was definitely immensely triggered and that I definitely overreacted to the situation. It didn't need to be that. And that's when I figured out, I think it did come from my stepdad growing up, just always criticizing everything I did. Yeah. So for me, in terms of how I deal with triggers is I definitely sit and think about them like especially if we're going to sleep like that'll be on my mind before i'm sleeping and i'll be kind of trying to figure out where that came from yeah. where has that happened before like because i've had references of that a similar trigger happening before um and so i figured it out um sometimes i'll journal yeah. sometimes that helps just to kind of like flow you don't even realize where your thoughts are taking you until you start writing them down um but the biggest thing for me i think is just for me personally, when a trigger is brought to my attention, I'm pretty good at remembering that trigger. This might not work for everyone, um, but when I have something that happened like that and I, f and I get become aware of the trigger, I remember that trigger mm. and I kind of think about that going into the future and it's always on my mind. So then if it comes up in further arguments down the track, just say it's never really as bad because I'm already kind of aware that it's there yeah. and I can catch myself being triggered. So I think for me, awareness is the biggest key. That's normally how I deal with mine. Yeah. And like you were saying in the intimate relationships, things are going to pop up and I just find the more things pop up or the more that I'm forced to deal with them. And when I say forced, I don't mean in a negative way, just by being in close proximity with you yeah. in living with someone, being in a relationship with someone, you're going to be forced to deal with your triggers. They're just going to come up. Yeah. I just find the repetition of that and constantly having things come up and needing to work on things get better over time. Like each time it happens, it's better. Yeah. Um, so I don't really give myself a time frame. I just find that I need to sit with my thoughts and think about it. You know, I need to figure out where it comes from. That's the most important part for me is figuring out where that trigger comes from, then doing some journaling about it, maybe some meditation mm -hmm. And just catching myself, just becoming aware of it. So, you know, if I am feeling triggered in that moment, then I'm aware that, that that's what I'm feeling. Like I can explain why I'm feeling those emotions and just making sure that, you know, I don't say things that I don't mean or let that trigger define the situation. Mm. That's powerful. Powerful shit. Do you talk about this very often? Not really. Speak very well. She's a fucking genius, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, um, well, something that, uh, just to add on top of that, it's, there's a book behind me, um, behind us on that shelf it's called you're not broken and it's the one of the takeaways is trauma is unprocessed memories so just to put a bit of context on what george is doing there from my perspective is she's processing the trauma and that's through meditation or through journaling as you said putting awareness on it 
um, because darkness disappears with awareness, right? Like darkness is untranscended light. So being able to just put awareness on it and actually confront it versus put your head in the sand, which is what most people do. They get triggered like what we were the couple of weeks ago. And if we just put our head in the sand and just ignore what happened, then the same thing's going to show up again in a week or two weeks or whatever. And that's just something that I'm just so proud of who we are and what we do for each other. So yeah, I wanted to talk about that. So um, that, that was beautiful. Yeah, just kind of going off on that, you know, like where people just put their head in the sands. I think what happens with... A lot of people, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think this is just the human, the human way of surviving almost. But I think a lot of people take being triggered as an insult, yeah. and then they're being triggered again. Yeah. But yeah. not a lot of people often become aware that they are being triggered. They just think they're right. You know, I'm right. You're wrong. You, you hurt me. You hurt my feelings. Like you should apologize, etc. Yeah. You know, this is how I feel. And they kind of just justify their behavior. And there's nothing wrong with feeling the emotions. And there's nothing wrong with being triggered. It happens all the time to the best of us. Even the most developed people will still get triggered. So, yes, feel those emotions. But I think the difference is that majority of people just justify those emotions and then never do anything about them because they don't think there's anything to be done. So the standalone is actually being able to differentiate when, you know, these emotions are justified or when you actually are being triggered. Good fucking train of thought. This will turn into a full podcast on that. So, anything, any other comments on that? Because we can talk. I could talk all day about. Yeah, this, I could talk about this. There's, 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 there's a couple of things I, I want to talk about. You know, for people listening as well, it's it's very easy to be triggered, and it's very easy to just kind of, like you said, throw your head in the sand and pretend that there's nothing wrong because a lot of people won't think that there is anything wrong. Yeah. So I think a really good tip for that is just to actually like think about those conversations after you have them. You know, if yeah. you have little blow ups and things you might feel like you're you're right in the moment but just actually evaluate how you reacted evaluate how that situation went down afterwards and really kind of think and being like and be honest with yourself being triggered isn't a bad thing yeah. being triggered means that you're growing yeah so just really sit down and think well could i have handled that better is that coming from somewhere like you know am i did i react that way because of something that else else that has happened in the past spot on really spot on i love the way you put that together just so we don't go on this for too much longer because mm. there's a couple other things I want to ask about. I'd like to go into boundaries with mm. us and just, just our relationship. I think um, as all relationships grow, you you implement more things. As a business grows, you implement more things and it just it's an ever-evolving machine. It's the fix the plane while you fly it and it's very much the same in a relationship. I'd like to know what's things that I think we've implemented with our relationship. There might be official things like the turmeric thing comes to mind, which we'll get into, but... Um, yeah, what's either things we unconsciously have started doing together or things that we have consciously say, hey, look, this is something I'd like to move forward with um, that's helped us over the last sort of year and a half since we've done a podcast? I think just more of these conversations. I think we just talk about it more. Yeah. And I think it's become something that's actually really important for us to just discuss these things more often. And in the past, I would get triggered by this sort of <laughs> thing because I would feel like I was about to be attacked. Yeah. But Feedback in relationships is really important, even if it's negative. So I think we've improved a lot where we can actually give each other negative feedback and we don't take it as an attack. Like yep. we awesome. can say things that are frustrating us, but it's in a safe space. I saw a little video today. I don't know who it was, but it was like the art of giving, challenging your partner without criticizing your partner. And I think we fi we're finding a better balance. Definitely not perfect. I'm sure like with the what happened the other week about the eggs, I'm sure that could have come across as criticism. But yeah, just finding that balance between supporting each other and challenging each other, that leads us to turmeric. So um, do you want to talk about turmeric or do you want me to talk you, about turmeric? You can talk so, about turmeric. Um, so I had this little um, I don't know, train of thought and it was just like, because I, I, I think about relationships a lot. I think about the self-development that happens within a relationship. That's the part I really find fascinating. And it was like, because I, I work with clients and it's just like, the, it, it, it very often surprises me why people put up with poor behavior like it just doesn't make like from my way of thinking maybe i'm very unique and a bit different with it i'm like they treat me like shit i'm like well then hold them accountable or leave them like it just makes like th th you got two options it's like hold them accountable don't let it happen again because you get in life what you tolerate hold them accountable to it and if they don't respect your boundaries and obviously there's you need to communicate that in a healthy way you need to work together to do that and if they don't abide by it and i know that can sound very formal and very harsh in a relationship that's more like a military term but like you need to have that fundamental alignment with where you are guys are going what's the vision what are your standards for each other and what you do and don't 
uh, tolerate within each other. And if, like if I always say, like, if I was to treat Georgia like shit, if I was to really be mean to you, be cruel to you, outside of being triggered, we're going to get triggered and we're naturally, like, you probably said some nasty things to me when the egg thing happened. I can't even remember what happened. It just, it is what it is. When you're in a trigger, in a wound, that's kind of like, it shit happens. That's cool. But if you were just starting to be a really cruel, mean person, or I was to you, I would hope that you'd leave me. Mm. I would hope you'd have the self-respect and self-love and self-worth for yourself to either hold me accountable, which you do really well, or if I don't fix my shit up, fucking leave me. Like, I would hope that you'd do that. Um, do that. So, uh, something, anyway, long story short, is it's like, how do you have the conversation of, hey, this is a non-negotiable for me without having to turn it into like a full like DNM, full like proper chat where it's like, hey, babe, can I be really serious with you? If you keep doing this, that's a non-negotiable and I'd, this is not the relationship for me. Because like, to do that, it kind of kills the vibe. You don't really yeah. want to have that every fucking two seconds. So we said, well, how can we just come up with a word where if you were to do something that is like, something I don't stand for or vice versa, you don't stand for, what's a word that we can use to save us having to have the chat? So we use the word turmeric. So for example, um, I'm trying to think of one because we don't actually use it that often. <laughs> but uh, but um, it, ha- it happened a couple of, oh, self-development. So mm-hmm. that trigger that actually ties in the same chat. So that chat that we had about the egg with the trigger, it was before Georgia had, I guess, fully settled down and come back to neutral. I was probably trying to solve problems, which is what men do too often and too quick is we try to solve problems too quickly. And I was definitely doing that. Um, But a turmeric with that was Georgia making sure she addresses this wound. Mm. If Georgia does not go and do the work on herself to address this, because if she doesn't, the same thing's going to happen again and again and again. It gets worse and worse and worse. That's a turmeric for me. I would not be in a relationship with someone who does that and vice versa. I would hope she helps me in the same. If I get triggered, which I still do, and if I'm choosing, that's the, this is the key part. You're choosing not to work through it. That's the part that's a turmeric for me. So yeah, we came up with something that I think it doesn't happen that often. There's not, we don't really do that much mean stuff to each other on purpose or consciously or unconsciously. But it's just um, a little code word sometimes. Yeah. Because it, then it's not you know having to sit that person down and be like, look, I've got something really serious yeah. to talk to you about. Which most people retreat into their wounds when that happens. And anyway. they hate those chats like you, most people would normally get anxious. So just by having a little code word, it just kind of takes the, ser- not the seriousness, but it takes away like the nervousness around it. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's been really awesome. So that's something that's really evolved. That's only a couple of months old, to be honest. I don't even know where turmeric came from, hey? Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I I honestly think it was that one chat. So it's probably only a month old. Mm. Um, I think it actually came from that chat. It was like, what's a word? No, it wasn't. It was before that. It was something else that popped up. But it was, it was you doing this self-pleasure work. Mm. It was that stuff. Georgia, if you're okay speaking with this, um, Georgia wasn't doing the self-pleasure work for her sexual healing journey that she's on, that she said she wanted to and she said she was going to. She wasn't doing it to the level that she, she wanted to. And I, I just uh, and, th- and that's where it's like, hey, look, without making this a full formal conversation where you need to do this, otherwise I'll leave, what's a word we can come up with? And that's where Trimerick was born. Um, so that's something that we've come up with, um, which has been really awesome. I think it's just consciousness. I think we're just a lot more aware with each other. I think... We respect each other a lot more. Um, Respecting each other's boundaries as well. You know, where we I still respect annoy each her other's though. space. <laughs> I still annoy you though. You do. You're a bit of an antagonizing personality. It's, but really, it's, fun. it's really fun. But For anyone listening, is it like the funnest thing ever to antagonize your partner? It's like, if Mason, if you listen to this, I know you will, but uh, to Savvy K. But yeah, but with the respect, I do give, give the space when she wants the space. Yeah, I think like by having your own space and having your own independent interests and things like that, it helps cement your relationship further because you're a person outside of your relationship hmm. something uh, well, let's go into that something i think we i don't think we've actually had conversations about we just kind of like become doing this i think we something we do really well is we actually give each other space really well mm. like we work from home like we're I'm, both introverts yeah we, we we work from home we've got a, a sizable house so we've, we've got enough room to sort of separate ourselves but the office we're in right now if you're watching the video this is like the office i work from and George is generally home. She's either in the bedroom or she's downstairs or she's out the front in the sun reading. But like we just give each other... Yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. I don't want to answer this. What's your thoughts on how we handle giving each other space to prioritize our own things like for your training, for your dancing, for your image stuff, for mm-hmm. your reading. Um, and yeah, not forcing to be together or yeah. be needy of each other where we actually give each other space. I think it's definitely gotten better like the longer we've been in a relationship. I think in the beginning of the relationship, I was definitely a lot more clingy. Um, But I think it's really important to have an identity 
outside of your mm. relationship and Absolutely. have different interests that you don't share together. Like you need to still have your own self. And I think having space from each other in a relationship is also really important because it can become a bit claustrophobic sometimes just being around the same person all the time. And we do work from home. So we are at home together almost all the time. And I think what we've realized is that it just comes down to values. You know, relationship is obviously in our values and it's very important to us, but there are other things that we find valuable. I have other values that are higher than relationship in mine. And so do you. And if those values aren't met, then we're not very happy. And then our relationship is not very great because the other person is clearly not satisfied. So for me, I train every, like he trains at 5.30 a.m., I am not waking up that early to go train. 5 a.m. Let's clarify that. <laughs> 5 a.m. I am not waking up that early to go train. I could do that and we could train at the same time and then we'd have, you know, that time together in the morning. But we respect that I don't like training that early, but training is also a lot more important to me. I train at 8, 8 a.m. So I'm gone for most of the morning anyway. And he doesn't mind because you're working. Like, you know, you're doing your own interests. And during the day, you normally will maybe have lunch together. But I mean, it's kind of like anyone who works in a nine to five job, really. Like they're not with each other every day we're doing our own separate things. Like I really, really value my time to be able to read during the day as well or, you know, to take the dog for a walk or to be doing my own sort of work on my on my business yep. downstairs. I think we're just really good at picking up on when we need space yep. and both being introvert, introverted people, I we both really like our alone time. Okay. And I think we're really good at picking up on when the other person wants some alone time too. Beautiful. And I do think a lot of that comes from just knowing each other so well and we have been together for so long. So... That definitely does help. But I think the moral of that is that space is actually very important in a relationship. The more you, I think, what's the right word? The more you just are around each other, I think you can get on each other's toes. And I think the more like you, likely you are to have blobs when you're not having time to yourself. Yeah. And having time to yourself is really important for processing things as well. Yeah, big time. Absolutely. Anything else on that? Gorgeous. I want to finish your inner child because we've already been going for th 31 minutes. So... Uh, we might have to do this more frequently. So mm. if you guys get value from this, comment down below. We don't do that many together. Maybe uh, specific topics next yeah, time. Maybe, yeah, maybe sp we're kind of just doing a bit of a mixed bag right now. But yeah, if you guys are getting value from this, if you've enjoyed this, comment down below. Um, and maybe even want to comment some questions, whether it's like intimacy questions, communication questions, boundary questions, com whatever it may be. Um, the last one I've written down that I would like to just talk about because I think it's something we've gotten even weirder with each other with um, is just letting our inner child come out. And I, I, this ties into healing work and this ties into expressing your authentic self and expressing your inner child for anyone that, I guess, understands that term. Um, I guess from my perspective anyways, I think we just feel a lot safer with each other. I feel like we're... Um, we let our inner child come out <laughs> a lot more. We have like sometimes at night, we'll kind of like play and wrestle and annoy each other to like fucking 11 p.m. or 10 yep. p.m. at night. So we normally go to bed <laughs> around 8.30 and we'll start reading. But then like some sometimes nights, those weird moods just kick in. Yeah, they were just we like weird and playful <laughs> with each other for like an hour in bed and she's like, shut the fuck up, go to bed, um, which is quite fun. But I've, I've that's something I've really enjoyed. Like I, that's something that's really important to me in my relationship. So yeah, what's, what's kind of your version of that? Well, I think it's what you said, it's safety. So we know each other so well, but I think we feel so comfortable and safe around each other that we can just be completely who we are. We can be our weirdest, most authentic self and not feel judged. Yeah. So the weirdness certainly comes out when you feel comfortable around someone. Like uh, you are fucking weird. I can be very weird too. Like everyone gets in those weird moods too and can be silly and stupid. And I just feel like I can do that. Like I, I sing. So like I will just fucking belt out music really loud and I'll just be Taylor singing Swift. so loud. All yeah. fucking day. All the All time. Day. All day. Um, but like if I would, if I didn't feel comfortable with you or didn't feel safe with you, I wouldn't do that. I don't do that with anyone else besides you. Like no one else sees that side of me. Yeah. I just feel like I can be completely authentic with myself and as weird as I want to be because I feel like we've created that sense of safety with each other where there is no judgment. Mm. And we appreciate that side of each other as well. I agree. Beautiful. Any, any closing remarks? We could go on for longer, but I think this is long enough for this podcast. It's 30 three and a half minutes so far so yeah i feel like this is just kind of like a rambling of our conversations on different topics that we've evolved in in the past year i think there's been a lot of evolution in our relationship and a lot of progression of where we're going and i think we're at a really strong point in our relationship where we feel very secure i feel like this is the most secure i've ever felt in a relationship and definitely the most secure that i've ever felt in our relationship yeah. where i know without a without a doubt that you are the one that i'm going to be with for the rest of my life but i think it's a multitude of reasons, including the topics we talked about today that make me feel that way. Beautiful. Any any advice that you'd say to anyone that's listening to this 
of how to just improve their relationship. I know it's hard without knowing context of the person, but if you just had to give some mm. general advice, what's some general advice you'd have? And we'll, we'll finish on this question. I think I've got two two big things. I think work on yourself, but it doesn't have to be self-development courses or big expensive things. Working on yourself simply means being alone with your own thoughts sometimes, journaling them down and just being aware of when shit comes up and actually reevaluating those situations after it happens and just thinking it through and be okay with not being right. There is... There shouldn't be a right and wrong in a relationship. There should be how can we improve this as a couple. So you don't always need to win or to be right because if you try and win, then the other person's going to lose and that's not going to set up a healthy relationship. Think about how you can evolve as a couple together. Yeah. And then the other thing is have space. Have space from each other. Have your own hobbies that are different from each other and have time away from each other during the day. I think it's really important to be in your own presence and get comfortable being alone as well because then when you are together as a couple it just makes it even greater you're amazing i love you princess <laughs> love you. i love you <laughs> that's what we're like that's some of the weirdness that's like one percent of the scale of how weird he is but guys thank you for watching like i said we don't do that many of these so if you got value from it comment down below share this with a friend tag us message us both individually on instagram share it on your story give us a tag and yeah i appreciate your time baby girl i love you love you Bye.